Hello everyone. Today is the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and on this anniversary we would like to do something special. So we are holding our first ever interview. This is Robert Woods or as I like to call him Drill Sergeant Woods as he was my drill sergeant at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Drill Sergeant Woods has served three years active duty in the Army and going on 13 years in the U.S. Army Reserves. He's been a drill sergeant for eight years and he's also been a New York fireman for another eight years. Drill Sergeant Woods, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that leads me to my first question is, how has 9-11 impacted you? 9-11 uh, had, uh, it was, uh, I was in high school when 9-11 happened. And uh, believe it or not, my father was a fireman uh, working that night. So uh, he actually, we didn't see him for uh, close to 48 hours. And uh, uh, it was just a, a big impact, especially when you know you go to the rooftops in Brooklyn where I grew up. See what was going on. So I was only 16, like I said, when it happened. So I actually tried to join the military at 16, but they sent me back home to my mother and told me to graduate high school. Yeah. So. <laughs> did you go to a recruiter at 16? I did. I did. Yeah. And I almost got away with it, but it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you didn't lie about it, like a lot of people in World War II. <laughs> How does 9-11 still affect you today? Um, you know, 20 years later. It's one of those days um, you just never forget. You know, unfortunately, I hate to say in 20 years, uh, that time has elapsed and there's a lot of people that has forgotten. But it's still a ton of people that still uh, live by that slogan. And uh, especially here in New York, being a fireman, um, we haven't forgotten at all. Absolutely. And, and where exactly are you in New York? So now I'm, uh, I was flying in Manhattan for uh, the majority of my career, but now I'm over in Santa. Okay. Joe Sergeant Woods, how many combat deployments have you been on? So we were on that one. Or that was extended uh, back in 2006. We were there from 2006 to 2007, all the way up to 2008. And that was in Iraq or Afghanistan? That was in Iraq. We were in the uh, Saladin province, which is uh, we, we were we were responsible for um, uh, monitoring, stabilizing, clearing, and securing uh, the Aziz Balad area. That was. Uh, the Jabal Peninsula and the Jabal Peninsula was like a hot fleeing Syria, Iran, and Pakistan. Okay. And what was that combat deployment like? You ever been to hell? No. Yeah, it's a bad place. It's a bad place, but I tell you what, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. I really? really wouldn't. Yeah, I can only imagine. I haven't personally been deployed, but like the sense of impact uh, that you, you might have felt over good. there and like... You know, when 9-11 happened, like, that's part of the reason why I joined the military is to, you know, help <laughs> avenge what had happened that day, you know, to make things right and to be like a force for justice. So I can only imagine you having been in that combat zone, uh, really feeling like this is where I need to be. Yeah, like I said, you know, when uh, I remember it was after the first year of 9-11, you know, on the news, they had to, you know, remembering all the fallen firemen, and I swear to God, my father must have knew at least a hundred of them. You know? So, looking back at your military career and especially your service to the community in the fire department, what things are you most proud of? Um, I would have to say, without a shadow of a doubt, the men I served with, uh, the men I trained, uh, including you guys, <laughs> when I was uh, there, no sergeant. Um, just uh, the big part of you, and you know, it, it's such a, a brotherhood and a camaraderie that uh, you'll never let go of. And you know, it'll always be there. And just serving alongside uh, the men that I served with, I couldn't be prouder of them. Absolutely, yeah. That's one of the things I enjoy the most as well is the, the brotherhood and the family that the that the military oh. provides. Yeah, like I love soldiers. I'd do anything for them. So. It's, it's your, uh, they become your family. They really do. Absolutely. It's, it's a big similarity, uh, a similarity with the former department. 
that same camaraderie, that same brotherhood, and you know, just they always have you six, no matter what. Yeah, and, and you're really serving in a, in a unique way. You're like a double-edged sword, you know, like the army and being a fireman have so much in common. Like, you know, in the in the army, you're willing to run towards the bullets. In in the fire department, you're willing to run towards the fire. Like people, the things, people that run away from these things, you're running towards. And it's not just you, but you're running with other people uh, that are unified against that one thing. You always gotta go with the actions. You gotta go with the actions. <laughs> exactly. You're like you're living a life of action for sure. So, with both of your jobs as both a soldier and a fireman, what do you find to be the the hardest or most difficult part of your job, and, and what's the most rewarding for both of those jobs that you have? I would say the most rewarding is probably. The man that I, that I become, that the, you know, the, the military has molded me into me. Um, same thing with the fire department. It's just that uh, you're expected to be a certain way, act a certain way, and perform at a certain level. Um, so with that being said, you know, I'm approaching a time in my life where I've been in the military for more than half my life. Yeah. And that's, you know, which gets me to your next question. I don't think I've yet to see the hardest part. That's the hardest part for me is going to be um, saying goodbye, um, knowing it's that time to hang up my hat, put away my gear, and uh, walk away from it all. I, I think that's going to be the hardest part, is just calling it quits. Absolutely. Cool. I got all that audio, and the video was good. All right. Make sure you go over this, and if I sound like a f***ing idiot, we're going to have to start all over. <laughs> No, you're good. Do you have any crazy fireman stories that you'd like to share? Not that I would share. Not that I would share. Absolutely not. <laughs> Very nice. Well, just wanted to thank you again so much for joining me on our, our first interview for Freedom One Coffee um, in remembrance of 9-11. And again, I just wanted to thank you so much for, for your continued service to our country. And uh, we really appreciate you and everything you do for us. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And, uh, Forget. Absolutely. And uh, we would like to give you and your, your fire station uh, several bags of coffee to bring in a work next time. So. That sounds great, but it's called the firehouse. Oh, the firehouse. <laughs> Very nice. Well, well thank you so much. Thank you.